Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody, this is uh, Dr. Ravindra Maradi, Associate Professor in the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturba Medical College. In this uh, topic, I will be discussing about uh, uh, inborn errors associated with the sulfur containing amino acids. Before uh, uh, looking directly into the uh, uh, disorders associated with this, we will just have a brief look on how this methionine or sulfur containing amino acids are metabolized. <coughs> First thing is methionine is converted into S adenosyl methionine and for this you require ATP and ATP is the donor of adenosyl group to the methionine and the enzyme required for this is S adenosyl methionine synthetase. S adenosyl methionine synthetase uh, and the difference between this methionine and S adenosyl methionine uh, abbreviated as SAM, it requires an adenosyl group and that is donated by the ATP and the in, uh, uh, inorganic phosphates, three inorganic phosphates are hydrolyzed during this reaction. Next what happens is the methyl group carried by this S adenosyl methionine is donated to some of the methyl acceptors and we produce some of the methylated products like epinephrine and creatine. These are the products they uh, use this uh, methyl group donated by S adenosyl methionine and uh, they, they will be synthesized and the product we get is S adenosyl homocysteine and uh, the difference between S adenosyl methionine and S adenosyl homocysteine is the S adenosyl methionine does not contain that methyl group that is carried by the methionine and uh, this uh, reaction is catalyzed by methyl transferase. And once uh, this methyl is transferred, the ne in the next reaction there is a hydrolysis of this adeno S adenosyl homocysteine to give back that adenosine taken in the first reaction to form homocysteine. And this uh, homocysteine is an important molecule in this methionine uh, metabolism because this molecule is associated with lot of disorders associated. And what, what is the fate of this homocysteine? Homocysteine can be converted into cystathionine and the enzyme required is cystathionine beta synthase. Here it uses this uh, serine and it forms cystathionine and uh, this requires a vitamin that is vitamin B6 pyridoxal phosphate is required for its activity. Then the homocysteine is uh, converted into cysteine and uh, alpha ketobutyrate and ammonia. The serine is converted in this reaction into cysteine and remaining part is released as alpha ketobutyrate and alpha ketobutyrate can be converted into propionyl CoA then into succinyl CoA and this enters into the TCS cycle and uh, the, for this reaction you, the enzyme required is cystathionase. This is also vitamin B6 dependent reaction and then the cysteine undergoes desulfuration removal of the sulfur group to form pyruvate. Okay. That is one way of converting homocysteine into uh, cysteine and pyruvate and succinyl CoA. The other major pathway homocysteine can go into uh, is synthesis of methionine. If you look at the difference between methionine and homocysteine, there is just a methyl group is less in homocysteine 
okay because we have added adenosine in the first reaction of this s adenosyl methionine synthetase reaction and that adenosine is adenosine is taken out uh, in the third reaction so ultimately one methyl group is given in this uh, methyl transferase reaction if you provide that methionine to homocysteine you can directly synthesize the methionine so this is done by the methyl group is donated by methyl cobalamin vitamin b12 provides that methyl group and converts homocysteine to methionine and the cobalamin is uh, formed here without methyl group it is remethylated with the help of tetrahydrofolate okay the enzyme required here is methionine synthase it is also called as homocysteine methyl transferase also because the methyl group is transferred to homocysteine or the other name is methionine synthase once the methyl group is given by this cobalamin that is same methyl group is taken up from tetrahydrofolate n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and that gives the methyl group back to cobalamin and you get the free tetrahydrofolate so what happens whenever there is a b12 deficiency that time if that b12 is not there you can't take the methyl group from n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and you won't get the free tetrahydrofolate for one carbon metabolism so the folate is trapped in the form of n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate so b12 deficiency indirectly can cause deficiency of the folate <coughs> so if there is any block in the synthesis of this stathionine beta synthase or in methionine synthase there is accumulation of this deadly molecule called homocysteine either this homocysteine causes homocysteinemia homocysteinuria and it is associated with lot of disorders so there may be deficiency of either enzymes or if you see in this uh, for further metabolism in this you have uh, three uh, vitamins one is vitamin b12 that is cobalamin and you have vitamin b6 pyridoxal phosphate and you have folate in the form of tetrahydrofolate three vitamins are involved in the metabolism of this uh, homocysteine any deficiency of either enzymes or the vitamins can lead to homocysteine emia so what is the significance of this homocysteine if you look at the so many disorders associated with the increased homocysteine level it can cause oxidative damage and inflammation of endothelial and endothelial dysfunction risk of occlusive vascular disease deep vein th thrombosis thromboembolism stroke atherosclerosis mental retardation joint contraction and morphon like habitus so it it affects almost all the organs in the body just one molecule called homocysteine and why this is happening we have to explain biochemically what is why homocysteine is associated with so many disorders so the significance here the homocysteine level is increased level is proportional to the severity of the coronary disease the more homocysteine in the blood the severity of coronary disease also increases and it is inversely related to the vitamins that is three vitamins folate vitamin b12 i b6 because you know that these vitamins are required for the homocysteine metabolism and the level will increase level of homocysteine is associated with coronary disease we have to explain this why question why this homocysteine is associated with so many disorders because if you look at the structure of this methionine and homocysteine as i mentioned earlier methionine the sulfur group present in the methionine is protected by a methyl group here if you look at the homocysteine there is a methyl group is 
absent and it exposes the sulfhydryl group SH group this is a deadly molecule which causes it is a proficient reductant it is an active reductant which can reduce many molecules and then that free sulfur is very very dangerous to the body. So, what happens whenever this homocysteine with well, without that methyl group the sulfhydryl group is exposed then the free radicals that are formed generated in body uh, during uh, 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 the oxygen uh, we, we take or uh, free uh, in lipid peroxidations so many uh, uh, this are so many uh, areas we get that uh, normally uh, free radicals are produced in the body and uh, those free radicals are looking for those electrons and they take that uh, electrons from this sulfhydryl group and convert into water and this produces uh, exposes the sulfur group free sulfur group and those free sulfur group what it does it will cross link with the proteins the free sulfur groups can cross link with many proteins it may be albumin immunoglobulins or transferrin any any protein it uh, it causes a cross linking and within the homocysteine molecules and that cross linking of proteins is the cause it cause for all the uh, uh, disorders it is associated this explains why homocysteine is bad and it is associated with so many disorders so increased homocysteine is called homocysteine emia and if it starts excreting in the urine it is called homocysteine urea so the defect is either the enzymes are defective cystathionine beta synthase or methionine synthase or the vitamin deficiencies that is vitamin B12, B6 and pyridoxal phosphate deficiency can cause homocysteinemia. Consequences high level of homocysteine in the body and it gets excreted in the urine and the symptoms as I already mentioned it can cause mental retardation, seizures, osteoporosis, arachnodactyly, scoliosis, pectus excavatum, dislocation of lens and uh, the, the symptoms, signs and symptoms they mimic uh, Marfan syndrome. The treatment here is we have to provide low methionine diet containing low methionine you have to remember it is not no methionine because methionine is, is an essential amino acid they should provide a diet with very low methionine and uh, we have to supplement the amino acids that are involved in its metabolism that is folic acid vitamin b6 and vitamin b12 the other disorder associated is cystine urea and uh, here the cause is genetic transport defect here the amino acid excretion of cysteine along with the uh, ornithine arginine and lysine we abbreviate as coal c o a l and uh, here wha what happens the cysteine is excreted the there is a defect in the absorption of this uh, uh, cysteine in the uh, kidney so there is a genetic defect in this transport so it is not absorbed reabsorbed and it is excreted in the urine and what it happens it leads to cysteine precipitates leading to renal stones and uh, 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 this is uh, uh, most commonly associated with the renal stones because of the precipitation of cysteine in the urine it is cysteine urea. <coughs> Next is cystinosis. Here, what is with the defect is transportation of cystine from lysosomes. The cystine is trapped in the lysosomes of many tissues. So, what happens here is there is accumulation of cystine crystals in the lysosomes, leading to cystinosis, and it starts getting deposited in the soft tissues like kidney, cornea, reticuloendothelial systems. These are the three disorders. To summarize, 
we discussed about uh, started with the methionine, how methionine is uh, metabolized and how homocysteine is uh, produced and uh, we saw the what is the significance of this homocysteine biochemically we explained the homocysteine is a deadly molecule because of that free sulfhydryl group pr uh, present in that homocysteine whereas methionine is that sulfur is protected by the methyl group but that methyl group is absent in homocysteine and that becomes a deadly molecule and it causes protein cross linking and all downstream side side symptoms. So, we explain this homocysteinemia or homocysteinuria and here the defect may be the two enzymes that is cystathionin beta synthase or methionine synthase or three vitamins that is vitamin B12, vitamin B6 and pyridoxal phosphate can cause this disorder and the treatment is you can you provide low diet containing low methionine and supplementation of vitamin B12, vitamin B6 and pyridoxal phosphate. And next we saw this uh, cystinuria, here there is a reabsorption transport defect in the re, uh, reabsorption of cystine along with uh, ornithine okay, and cola that is lysine, ornithine and arginine and then uh, this starts precipitating in the urine and causes cystine stones. And lastly, we saw the cystinosis. There is a defect transport, uh, defect in the transport of cystine from lysosomes. There is deposition of cystine, and then it uh, deposits in the soft tissues like uh, kidney, cornea, and reticuloendothelium system. I hope this uh, lecture will help you to understand the inborn errors associated with sulfur-containing amino acids. Thank you.